Greetings fellow Gators, Rodamon here. Thank you for tuning in to a new tutorial series playing Exegate Initiative. Exegate Initiative is a game where you build and manage my mankind's first mission across the universe, uh, kind of like Stargate. Uh, create a sprawling facility underground, recruit a diverse group of specialists from around the globe, and explore mysterious new worlds through the Exogate. The game is uh, very Stargate inspired and feels a little bit like a cross between the original Evil Genius and XCOM. And uh, this stream will serve as a tutorial for new players, will also air on YouTube, and will include Twitch integration, which I will show you in short order. So let's get started. There is a different game types. There's Initiation, which offers up quests with uh, rewards and sort of drives the story, which I'm going to be playing, but there's also free play. And then for each game mode, there is contact frequency, uh, sort of like how challenging it is, low, balanced, or high. And we're just going to do balanced, a very normal beginning here. Welcome to your first day as an executive officer, or XO for short, at the Exegate Initiative. I'm Rudy Cobb with two Bs, founder and CEO. I've dedicated my fortune to the research and development of Exegate technology, capable of sending people not just across the galaxy, but across the universe. Today we take our first step, uh, our first tentative steps. The world is watching, but stay focused on your goals and we'll succeed together. All right, right off the bat, when you're playing the initiative, you'll have quests like this. On free play, you will not. So. Uh, at the start, I am going to explain some of the UI elements and stuff like that. Oops, that's not what I meant to do. And then um, and then we'll get into actually doing the business. So UI. Uh, in the top left, you've got the date. So it's February 11th, 2057 and the time of day. Uh, there is no time controls other than pause and play. There's no fast forward. I do feel like it's missing, but it's not that big of a deal. At the top, uh, you have your financial status. You do have a stipend from the committee, but then you can also make money through patents. Uh, you have to pay salaries, and there's other ways to make money as well. Uh, this is science points, which you gain from exploration. Power management, which keeps your operations running, very important. And then influence, and I'll get into that a little bit later. Uh, down here, you have the active quests. And then this is the build menu where you can dig, and this should be very familiar, uh, looks kind of like Dungeon Keeper or uh, or Evil Genius or something like that. You can dig out rooms, you can build walls, you can designate specific facilities. Uh, then there's also doors, double doors, guard posts, and weapon racks. And then there is locked rooms as well, but the rooms that you start off with is a barracks, a mess hall, a laboratory, and a power plant. Uh, the next menu, is Gators. Gators is just sort of a term for anyone that you've hired. And the way it works is you put up a recruitment campaign to recruit uh, people. So that's actually the first thing I'm going to do. There is different classes. There's scientist, soldier, medic, engineer, scholar, and diplomat. Every of the other classes get unlocked through research. So our first is going to be for a scientist. Um, for your recruitment campaign, you can designate the maximum salary that your scientists will earn. The higher the salary, the more higher skill that they will start with, but then of course they're more expensive. Uh, how long the campaign's duration is. So if you urgently need like a medic or something, you can uh, have a very short duration. But if you raise the duration, it costs you no additional money, but it will attract additional applicants. And then how much the upfront budget is. So if you wanted to be very economical, you could max the duration, minimize the wage, and minimize the campaign's budget. And I want three scientists, so I am willing to pay 12000 over the course of 10 days for scientists that are willing to work a uh, very low wage, because that's just how I'm going to play. And over here, it will tell you exactly that. I'm actually going to turn off the tutorials because I'm going to be... Well, I'll leave them on. But this pretty much explains exactly what I just said. Um, so that's the recruitment campaign. And it takes 10 days for you to be able to accept the applicants. And they won't pend here forever. So once your campaign runs, you'll have a certain amount of time to recruit the potential gators to join your program. Uh, but if you sleep on that, 
then you have to run a new campaign. So uh, the next button is the star map and missions. I'll get into this a little bit more, but um, initially you have a little star map of um, hexagonal worlds that you can explore. In order to explore these, there's a recommended level for the team that you send there. Um, one, two, three, so on and so forth. And the harder it is, the more likely you are to get wounded or killed going there, unless you meet the requirements or you have soldiers that make it a little bit safer. And then there's also a lock energy cost. So as you connect to these gates, you can connect and disconnect as you please, but it costs you energy to stay locked in. Think chevrons. So the longer your chains are, uh, the more expensive it will be for power to explore. So power ramps up as you branch out into the universe. And there's also uh, a whole lot of special events out in the world, and, and we'll get into that as I start exploring. The next menu is artifacts. There are artifacts out in the world. Once you have a library, you can start collecting artifacts, and they have set bonuses, like bonus to 100% more efficient healing, or science theories are developed more uh, higher quality, so on and so forth. Uh, and then the last one is your research tree. And the way the research tree works is... Here, let me quiet all that. The way the research tree works is you build up research as you explore and bring back um, samples and specimens to study in your laboratory, uh, which will unlock research points. And then you can spend the research points at a laboratory research bench to unlock things. So you have start off with barracks, mess hall, some of the power plant. These are better power plants. Uh, some of the laboratory, but you don't have the specimen study. And as you progress, you'll gain more research and you have to invest in it carefully. Uh, so let's start with building a barracks oh uh, i think the way i'm going to set this up so you can have all of your gators share one universal barracks there's no penalty for that necessarily but um i sort of like the idea of having each and every person have their own private room so that is my current priority is build private rooms and a mess hall um when I first started to play, I kind of wanted to keep... So so in this game, you have teams of three. And I kind of wanted to keep teams of three in the barracks. But then I realized that you shuffle your crew around a lot. So it didn't make sense to like have barracks one be for alpha team. And barracks two be for beta team. And barracks three be for, you know, gamma team or whatever. Um, so we'll, we'll get into that. But, um, but right off the bat, let's go ahead and uh, dig the... I'm going to dig a hallway like this, and then have individual bedrooms. So it's going to, say, build a barracks with a minimum of 20 blocks. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to satisfy that need and then destroy it so that people have individual bedrooms instead. <coughs> Sorry about that. <clears throat> Um, so yeah, let's have little two by three cubby holes like I'm playing Dwarf Fortress. And, oh, it looks like I ran into undiggables over here already. So instead, let's switch directions. Oops. I swear I can, I can, I can dig rooms. And over here, I'm also making, leaving space for me to have um, generators, as, as I'll demonstrate probably the meta way to deal with that. Um, so I'm going to be trying to design this very aesthetically as well. So I'm not necessarily trying to min-max everything. I, I will want to make it look nice, in other words. Um, so then the other thing that we're going to need to build right off the bat is the mess hall. Um, it doesn't really matter where exactly where you put this. But uh, I think what I'm going to do is put my mess hall sort of around here. It doesn't need to be a huge building. But then what I'm going to do is I'm going to have... Um, let's see. I'm going to have the room like this sort of connected to a lot. And then we'll also want to start digging out uh, a space for the lab. And I'm going to raise the volume a little bit. We go. Krusty Rhino, uh, thank you for the gifted subs. Ignifolio, Double Dwarf, uh, Ba, thank you for the resubs. Cheers.
so this is the gate room and this is where your scientists or whoever is on your staff will leave from and you can see you start off with uh, three little construction box if you want to add to your construction bots you would go to the build menu and you can hire them out here to add more builders but they do cost an upkeep of um energy so you need to manage your power and initially it might not be wise to add a bunch of additional construction bots that you don't necessarily need plus there's an upfront cost of hiring them in the first place so once they're done digging they'll also start to build the rooms themselves and it's cheaper to dig out rooms rather than build walls because each wall that you build costs a thousand but digging is free minus the cost of supporting the robot's power. Um, and because I don't need a lab just yet, I'm not going to have the bots uh, execute this area at the moment. Joey, thank you for the resub as well. So individual bedrooms, a true luxury. I might have a low salary, but at least I'm trying to be nice to them, right? So if you wanted to min-max it, you could set it up so that your barracks, because the room designations itself cost money, you could min-max it so that you only have room designations for, like, the locker and the bed, which is the minimum requirement of a bedroom. Uh, but I'm going to have it be slightly larger than that. So now they're just uh, printing up the rooms here. And I'll have scientists to recruit in about one day. And the first three scientists have already been raffled off, but then all the other scientists thereafter will be named after you guys in the chat through raffling. The cost of actually constructing the room is done uh, once you build it itself. So if you, if you paint a bunch and stop, you haven't spent any money. Um, and then refunds is 50%, so uh, spend wisely. So now that we're done, you can see a little indicator uh, right here. And this is the scientist. So we have George Olette, hired. Emma Lee, hired. And Hugo Hoffman, hired. They're all idle. And we're going to add them to a first team. So I'm going to give the teams like Alpha, Beta, Gamma, so on and so forth. Uh, but call them by their purpose. Because this helps out a lot later. So this is just a team of all scientists. Eventually you'll have specialized teams of like scholars, diplomats, uh, soldiers, engineers, and it really helps to, uh, to have your teams named after what the team does. So right off the bat, I'm going to send these scientists out and I'm going to pick a level one world, uh, CU544. I'm going to create a mission to send my scientists there and start. And that tooltip was just warning me about the difficulty level and the lock energy cost, as I have already described. So now my three scientists come down from the surface, and this symbol means that they're heading straight to the gate. Uh, I'm also going to name them after uh, some Patreon patrons. So let's do C Panda, George C Panda. Call you Big, Big C Panda. Uh, did that name take? Yeah, there it is. All right, you are going to be... Iverin? And let's hope I actually keep these guys alive, because I have... Um, you know, I've, I've killed some people. Corner Perry. All right, Godspeed. You'll be the first ones to ever leave this planet. And let's uh, go ahead and get their bedrooms set up. So, bed on one side, and locker on the other. And this is so that they can recover their rest once they're done uh, out on the gate missions. I also feel like it's quiet again. And I'll even give them the doors. That's what kind of boss I am. Alright, the next thing that they're going to need is a mess hall. So the mess, the mess hall allows them to eat once they return from off-world. I'm not going to have a... Eh, you know, whatever. I'll just have a full-size mess hall. It is fine. And the game's going to uh, bug me that I don't have a barracks, a minimum size of 20, so I'm just going to have a generic barracks here, minimum size of 20. So, like, a, a 10 by 2 
just to satisfy the build a base and then I'm going to get rid of it. So now they are off world and the event logs are in the top left here. And we're running our first gate mission. Let's go ahead and satisfy the mess table and dispensers as well. Lovely. Oh, yeah, my uptime is all broken. Just ignore that. I'll try to fix it while I play. And we have our first event. So now is a really good time to remind you guys that you are able to vote in this game. The way you vote is exclamation mark, vote one or two or three. Uh, now that... Uh, now all the warm welcome guff is out of the way, let's get down to business. Mr. Cobb's purse strings are notoriously loose. Thus, we are at the committee, uh, we at the committee are here to ensure that space exploration remains profitable. We shall monitor your progress and release funds when you achieve your goals. Next goal, find life in the universe, a difficult but profitable endeavor. Would you agree? All right, so I am going to pause. Uh, this is what it wants me to do next in search of life. And this is the science team radioing in. Exo, it's C Panda. We stepped through the gate for the first time uh, back there. After a moment of dizziness, I was suddenly standing on the surface of planet CU-544. My god, it works. It certainly does. Uh, I can't believe... Uh, I, and I can't believe it. There's life here. This place is teeming with plant life. Not to mention these cloud formations. Uh, let's go with you just changed the world. I'd better think of something memo uh, memorable to say. Quickly, I had a line prepared, but this is too much. I've forgotten it. Uh, stay calm, Big. <laughs> I like how his name is Big. Uh, you're only being watched on every screen, uh, flat 3D VR HD from Mumbai to the moon. So, yeah, no pressure. I think I'm hyperventilating, so he lost one mental health. Try and relax. Or, actually, you're fine. You're doing great. I'm okay. I think I'm good. But I don't know what to say. Can I get a steer, XO? Uh, just be yourself, big. Alright. Taking a deep breath, and... It's a long way from Canada, where I grew up. I know all my friends and family are watching back home. And to them, I just wanted to say thank you, and I'll see you soon. Nicely done. Those words will go down in history. That was more nerve-wracking than stepping through the gate. How about getting a sample to show off on livestream? All right, so here is... Oh, you know what? I think I need to reconnect my... Uh... Oh, no, here we go. Let the viewers decide. So you guys are going to pick. Oddly, uh, yeah, I probably have to reconnect this. Um... So they chose the cliff. You better head out. So he is going to head to a cliff and collect samples. Bio samples. So he collected a bio sample. He earned a little skill, uh, science points, earned some XP. And then before I sign off, why won't you say a few words about the wider goals of the universe? Uh, science first to learn as much as we can about the universe. Okay, and they'll be heading home. All right, let me uh, reconnect the old uh, Twitch do. There we go. So now you'll be able to vote in the future. And this is what the end of mission screen looks like. So they each gained experience. C Panda gained a bio sample, and I'm going to need to make a laboratory for him to put that bio sample in. So let's get a laboratory up and running stat. So the laboratory is going to require uh, a minimum of 16 blocks, a biosample containment unit, a study desk, and to study the biosample I got. A 
And I'm going to go ahead and delete this fake barracks. As I no longer need it. And let's hire one more construction bot. Why not? So the reason I dog over here like this is so that I could put generators here. Using the hallways uh, properly. Cowley, thank you for the uh, resub. And if you have questions about the game, a lot can be answered in just using the about command. So if you're like, hey, what's this game about? I already have it written up for you. So here is food being delivered to the vending machines. The vending machines have to be restocked from the surface. And this also applies to things like medicine later on. Um, and then this is giving me a little warning that uh, Big C Panda has a bio sample in his hands and he has nowhere to put it because I haven't set up a laboratory. So I am getting that right now. And generators in front of the bedrooms. Yep. Just a little white noise hum to soothe the soul. So I'm going to show you two different methods to uh, to build. One is cheap. Well, actually, let's... Uh, well, whatever. One is cheaper and the other is a little bit more expensive, but they're both pretty valid. So you can just place down only the spots that you want, like this, to sort of nickel and dime the expense. It, it, this is probably especially useful if you're playing on hard difficulty. Or, alternatively, you can designate the entire room. Uh, both are totally fine. The game does not care which. So here is a bio-study desk. And then, to make these sample containments, it I require more power. So there's two things I can do. I can either build generators for more power, or I could go over to my star map and just disconnect the gate to CU544. And that will free up some power, maintaining that connection, allowing me to then build the... Uh, Build the containment unit. And I find that like roughly four containment units is a good number because you only temp you only store the uh, the bio samples temporarily. And then once you study them, um, you sort of get rid of them. So he you'll see Big C Panda sticks the containment unit in. And then once they're freed up, he'll take the containment unit, which looks to be some sort of plant out of there and stick it into the sample study desk. Study it and gain some experience in the meantime. Because I don't necessarily care about truly nickel and diming everything. I'm just going to have a proper lab that actually has uh, like the entire room. But both are uh, valid ways of going about it. And I'm also going to make some additional space for more recruits. So in this, this is the monthly budget review. Um, you can see that the committee has paid me. I haven't made any money off patents. I've paid their salaries of uh, 3K each for three um, scientists. Um, next month, the scientist's job popularity dips a little, meaning it's going to be harder to recruit them. And patents for sudden growth aren't worth as much. Textile sources are worth more. And I'll get into patents soon. Patents are a way to take to make money off of your samples, would be the uh, the quick TLDR. So once you study one of these samples, you'll gain insight into a specific type of technology, which allows you to then patent the idea. Holy cow, you did it. I knew we'd find life out there, but not this quickly. I watched the stream. Incredible. Those legendary first words on the exoplanet, just wow. Still... You need to keep money flowing if you want to keep the committee sweet. Did I mention we can sell patents? Develop theories by studying samples from missions and then use them to publish patents. So let's get a patent writing desk. And the current goal is actually to get five different theories and then to write a single patent using multiple theories. So we're not going to immediately um, get patents out. It's going to take a minute. But there's my patent desk in the corner. And then uh, what I'm going to want to do is send my scientists back out there. 
So I'm going to send them to another level one world. Connect, create mission for the scientists, and start. And they're all heading to the gate. Your scientists do have stats. They have rest, hunger, uh, brain fatigue, social needs, health, mental health, and level. And then they will also have gear if you have exosuits, uh, which I don't have yet. And then relationships with other people, um, whether they like them or not. I'm not really sure what the ramifications of relationships are. I assume if they hate one another, you really shouldn't put them on the same team. You know, avoid the Ragnar McKays and prioritize the Samantha Carters, in other words. Sorry, Rodney, but nobody liked you. Is it possible to revisit a planet? Yes, but, uh, but not for science. That comes later on. You'll, you'll see. And then I have another mission, which is form a second team. So let's go and clean up this old uh, recruitment campaign. And I'm going to run a long but very lack budgeted campaign for only one more scientist. Uh, actually, let's do two scientists. Oh, man, you're bleeding me. All right, there we go. This is the activity feed of, like, uh, what's been going on, what you've accomplished. Uh, it really helps when you have a lot of teams coming and going. Hmm. I might actually change this design a little. So that we can have uh, bedrooms like this. So I'll, ex I'll just excavate them ahead of time. Keeps my little uh, robots doing stuff. The robots that you have here uh, build, but they also maintain. So they will fix up any damaged um, devices. As you can see, everything has wear and tear. And that was a little heads up that I need a research desk. So here we go. Uh, we have got some more bio samples. Sea Panda and Hoffman. Oh, it should be Hoffman. That should be Perry. I'll recorrect that. Uh, both got a little bio samples for a little bit of science. So 26 science. I swear it was Perry. Are you renaming yourself now? Is this little NPC sentient? Slightly worried about a sentient NPCs here. Now I'm all sorts of paranoid. And we'll go ahead and get a research desk. Plop that in there. So there is the samples. Grab from that next world. They need to be studied. And each one is going to reveal patent opportunities. And we have our scientists resting. You don't want to burn them out. Um, burnout is really a bad thing. It takes a long time to recover in like a med bay. So give them some proper rest. Be kind. You know, the usual. I'm going to go with a somewhat more open court um, mess idea there. And then get the new bedrooms set up for additional recruits. Available to hire two scientists. Leroy and Campbell. All right. So, uh, raffle timer. Boop, right above my head. Good luck, subscribers in the chat. Subscribers in the chat can become these two new scientists.
as soon as my scientists are managed. So these two new ones need beds that I just hired because I haven't actually built the beds yet. We're about to do that. Um, I will... probably send out the alpha team scientists again. So I'm going to need to start renaming it like alpha, beta, gamma, epsilon. We won't have too many though. So here we go. So, uh, some new... They're being a little weird, where they have lockers in the other rooms. I'll, I'll correct for that. So we've got Averen. There we go. Sea Panda. All right. Everybody now owns the locker in their own room. Good. Just how I'd want it. And over here, we've got more of the samples being studied for potential patents. And then once I have a few patents in one specific line of science, uh, I will show you how to write a patent. So I just gave an uncommon, uncommon patent theory for energy source and for regeneration. So here's what it will look like. You pick a scientist to write a patent. Uh, the scientist that writes patents the best is the one with the highest knowledge. So if you wanted to check that, you could go to your individual scientists here and check their uh, knowledge stat. So C Panda is the most knowledgeable. And you you could pick C Panda at that point, tell them to write a patent, and then you pick the different topics. So there is trending topics, and you make more money for trending topics, and the patents last for 12 months, not 70 years or whatever. Uh, and you make money off of those patents over the duration of that time. All right, so let's go ahead and send the scientists back out. Uh, what science? You guys are level two, two, and one. All right, let's do a level two then. I think what I'll do actually is to sub C Panda and Averan out because they're level twos and put a level one team together to get our level ones a little bit of experience as well. It helps, especially when you have um, potential death. It really helps to have everybody sort of level up uh, evenly and equally. Because if you have, like, one super team um, and they suffer some calamity, uh, you're going to be pretty screwed. Uh, think kind of like XCOM. That's why in the description here, I liken the game a bit to XCOM. So this thing, this stuff is just non-mineable, yeah. Exactly. And at this point, um, I have enough research to unlock Medbay. So that is going to be my first research. I've gone through this story mode, and I know it's going to require me to do a Medbay next. So might as well jump on that. And let's create a new team here. And I'll just do a beta scientists. Beta scientist. Yep. Maybe just beta psi. Keep it simple. And then I can't edit this team because they're already out. So I need one more member for a second team. Um, I don't really know if I want a sixth scientist, though. I'm going to hold off on that. But you've got... Uh, Seapand over here, now putting the research in to unlock medbay. And then I'm also going to need a medbay. So let's get a medbay, and I'm putting it pretty close to the gate. So that uh, if people jump through the gate and they're hurt, you know, we can tend them quicker. All right, the current trending patent is food source. We don't have anything like that. And the raffle. Whammy, you are going to be one of these two. I don't think I can, I'm not, no, I can. 
was wondering if I could name them while they're uh, deployed or not. Okay, so we got Whammy and Rubrin. Congrats, you two. So, Perry and Ruburn both got some samples. Not a lot of science, but science can be also unlocked by analyzing the samples too. Also to mention, uh, if you take a look at the research desk, it requires a level two scientist to operate. The specimen study console requires level three scientists. So, um, you're, it's, you're sort of incentivized to like take care of your staff because level one staff are gonna have some problems. Uh, getting certain tasks done. Oh, thank you for the tip, Constantine. Cheers. How much is the game? Uh, 20 bucks. And right now in early access, I would say there's about 20 hours of gameplay. Um, there is a little bit of replayability with difficulties in the RNG of the star map, but about a buck an hour if you were to do that math. So when the vending machines run out of stuff, they get restocked and then your maintenance droids pick up the stuff from the escalator, or actually it's not even an escalator. It's, what would that be? That would be like a, uh, monorail? Yeah, it'd be like a monorail. Uh, picks the stuff up from the monorail and brings it over and restocks. I can also start claiming systems with my influence. Um, that becomes a lot more important later on. Uh, so let's go ahead and disconnect these two. And I want to head out to a new one. And this is going to be a level two. So create a mission. Send the... Uh, let's rename that team. Alpha Psi. Send Alpha Psi out. And this shows what kind of um, bonus experience they might get, depending on the affinity of the mission. So, like, if it's an engineering mission, you send engineers, they're going to get more experience, for instance. Uh, injury chance, chance, and then how severe the injuries are, if they do have it. Uh, if you send out Soldiers, it makes missions a little bit easier. If you send out medics, it makes the missions have less severe injuries. So instead of death, you might have wounds, which is, you know, maybe more agreeable. Okay, I have two patents for heat resistance. And right now, the quest they have is they need to earn more than two, 2k a month. And these will earn more than 2k a month. So... I'm going to have Big C Panda man the desk because he's the highest knowledge. Well, let me double check. Um, oh, no, you got passed up by Averan, I think. Yeah, so we'll have... Uh, this mission's already started. Averan is part of the beta size, so we'll have Averan write this patent then. So writing the patent about heat resistance with Averan because she's the most knowledgeable. And that will provide us periodic income for the next 12 months. And I need one more scientific theorem to satisfy the turning a profit quest. And then one more recruit to satisfy the second team. You know, I'll get one more scientist just to be able to finish it. Uh, finish that quest. But I'm not paying them anything. <laughs> You're working pro bono. I mean, hey, I might work pro bono if I could leave this planet. Are the portraits in the metaverse? Yes, this is 
This is Metaverse C Panda here. And so there she goes, writing a patent. And that should satisfy the write a single patent using multiple theorems that earn more than 2k a month. Right, bud? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Meta wishes that their, their Metaverse was this playable. Okay, there it is. Write a patent. So up here, you can see my patents are making twenty four sixty seven a month. And that has satisfied that section of the quest. <laughs> He's looking for, like, treats. I don't even want doors in my science. Open for all to see. All right, Whammy and Ruburn both gained samples. Nice. And then once Whammy uh, engineer reverse engineers the sample, that should give me my fifth patent subject. Give dogs a treat is out of stock. That's on purpose, so you guys don't overfeed them. There's a cooldown for it. When you claim a uh, a planet, you gain income, but the income is an influence, and I'm not going to explain that yet because it's not relevant yet, and I can't show you what it does. But there we go. I got the fifth theorem. So the last theorem was in energy source. I have two uncommon theories in energy source. So if energy source becomes sort of the trending monthly topic, it would be really good to publish that. And then here is the last scientist. I guess this is another raffle for whoever this is. I think this is the first American on the team. Andrew Garcia. Our finances are proceeding adequately, but that could disappear quickly with a well-aimed lawsuit. Far be it from us to tell you how to run the initiative, but our risk assessment shows we are lacking in the health and safety department. So you might also consider recruiting soldiers or two as well to make investors feel more secure. Uh, so right now, build a research desk, uh, research a med bay, and then build a med bay, minimum of 30 blocks, build a med bed, a diagnostic pod, a uh, treatment dispenser, and hire a medic. So we are building a med bay. I think I might incorporate, hmm. I might want to incorporate uh, sort of the concept of privacy in the med bay too. Like the individual rooms here. Well, no, I, I guess the further, first iteration I won't. So this is five by six. So that's the 30 size that I need. But eventually what I can do is have like individual patient rooms and things like that. And let's go ahead and run a recruitment campaign. Oh, uh, there was two to be hired. Sorry, uh, Chen, I'm not hiring you. Uh, a new recruitment campaign for a medic. So, max time, lowest wage. I'm going to raise the budget until I get maybe three medics. There it is. And I'm going to send my teams out again for more science. So, a mission for Alpha. And a mission for beta. Thank you for tuning in to Exegate Initiative, which originally streamed live on Twitch April 18th. If you have any feedback or questions for me, please let me know in the comments below. If you would like to catch a live stream of mine, Rodamont.com has my stream schedule and countdown timers to upcoming streams. If you would like to join my gaming community, 
Rodamont.com also has a link to Discord, as does the description of this video. Thank you so very much for watching, and a special thank you to my Patreon patrons, Twitch subscribers, and viewers like you that support the channel and made it all the way to the credits. Thank you so very much. I hope to catch you in the next episode or upcoming stream. Farewell, my fellow Gators. 